Hello everybody and welcome back to Sky Saga Alpha 7. I've been having so much fun here on Alpha 7, I've decided to put out a new video for Monday. Now if you guys like this and you guys want to see more of me playing Alpha 7, please let me know and I will start making Monday videos a regular thing. So we're going to get started because I've done a little bit more on getting myself sorted out and we are now up to settler level five which is really really exciting so before i quickly show you what's in my inventory i'm going to come down here and show you the last thing that we got so in level four we got something also really cool where is it? it's up in here it's this guy it is the revolutionary pickaxe of a range now what this guy does is it allows you to hit blocks at a very very long distance as you can see I am very, very far away from that block, and yet I can take that out in one hit, which is absolutely ridiculous. That is just amazing. This thing is awesome for anything to do with home island building. Not unlike uh, the pickaxe of demolition, which is definitely just for blowing away an island and removing everything as soon as possible. This thing is a one hit kind of precision instrument, so it's definitely something that I would only ever use for doing building type stuff, making sure that I've got things perfectly cleared or removing blocks that I think are wrong in a build, that type of thing would be what I would use this for. Of course it does have, it's still got a range, but that range is pretty incredible as you can see. It's just an awesome, awesome tool. But yeah, so why I've started recording now is we now have hit level 5, and so in my rucksack I have uh, this bad boy. The armor design, fantastic breastplate of free flight. Now, this does exactly what it sounds like. It is the flight breastplate, or the flight piece of armor for Sky Saga Alpha 6, which is awesome. This is mind-blowing. You can fly around on your own home islands. This is just so good. Anyway, I have a few bits and pieces that I need to make up so we can actually make this thing. And then we're going to put this on on camera and we're going to go for a bit of a wander around this home island. And by wander, I mean fly. So here we go. Let's make this thing up. And I've got a bit of a graphical glitch here, but it's only going to take 10 seconds. So let's see how this thing goes. And oh, I'm just so excited. This is going to be awesome. And of course, this episode, we're going to again try and get even higher in our Settlers Guild because there is more things to go and see. Oh, let's take this thing outside. Oh, this already looks awesome. And I've barely seen it. Alright, let's take a look at this guy. Oh, check that out. That is so cool. Oh, and a little propeller on the back and everything. Oh, that is absolutely amazing. And of course, I made this with green bolts, green leather straps, and then iron... Uh, sorry. Iron buckles and green bolts. Moss green bolts. Alright, so let's take a look at this guy. Let us fly around. So, double pressing space allows you to fly and just look at this thing. This is amazing. And you can even sprint while you're flying. That is really cool. Alright, I'm going to go out um, to third person view while we fly around here. Oh, what's this over here? Hello. Oh, cool. We actually get a um, recipe amber on our home island. Decor M recipe amber. That is really cool. And I would never have found that without this uh, breastplate of free flight. Oh, just check this out. I'm going to love using this thing. So together, you could use this to knock out virtually anything, really. Because you've got a very long range and you can also just fly wherever you want to go. And, yeah, you can hold down Sprint, and it actually I'm pretty sure it actually moves faster. Let's try this out. Not too bad. Yeah, there you go. Look, it does actually... Sprinting does actually work, and it speeds you up, but it doesn't take any stamina. That's awesome. Oh, this thing is going to be so good for building in this game. It's also going to be really good for knocking out home islands, because you could just fly around and use the pickaxe of demolition to just destroy everything. That is going to be so, so cool. Oh, I'm loving this right now. Absolutely loving this right now. Alright, I'm going to keep flying around for a little bit. I probably shouldn't record all of this because it is just going to be me flying around this home island. 
for a very long time. But that's all right. I'm going to do a bit more flying around and then check out how this thing works a little bit better. And then we'll move on and do some other things. Try and get that settlers as high as we possibly can get it. And I think I've got a plan for what to do with this free flying breastplate. Holy cow, that was a bit of a glitch. Woohoo! Here we go! Settler rank 6. Let's take a look at what this guy is going to give us. Ah, here we go. The Hurtful Gauntlet of Hauling? Hurling! That's the word I'm looking for. Wow, I cannot speak today. That is kind of ridiculous. But yeah, these things are pretty cool. Once again, this is another thing that was kind of shown off a little bit on Twitter. And this is actually basically the exact opposite of the last level up. So the last one was the Fantastic Pickaxes of Range, which could uh, allow you to destroy a block at kind of almost any distance. These guys are completely the opposite. They allow you to place blocks at any distance. And they're the reason that I didn't fill this hole in, because now I know... Well, now that I have these things, I can just fill these holes in without having to climb up or pill around or anything. I can just fill in any holes I see in the wall just whenever I need to, basically. So I'm going to get a, a pair of these built up and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so let's equip these guys up, place some blocks in our hands, and we should be able to... Yeah, see, there we go. Can... Fix blocks to the roof from this distance, which is absolutely incredible. It means that, yeah, I don't have to pillar around anymore. Not that I needed to anyway, because I can just take out my breastplate of free flight and I can just fly anywhere I need to go. But yeah, now I've got these guys as well. I've got a double whammy of being able to place blocks pretty much wherever I want and or need them around here. It's going to be so, so helpful for building because this is going to make everything easier in terms of building and this is the the reason that i'm actually probably going to start taking on a couple of different projects here in sky saga alpha 6 especially this early i'm going to take on a whole bunch of things all at once the first thing i want to do of course is to get some community games back up and running i know I've, you guys have seen that a little bit already because i've done that in the last episodes of Alpha 6, but I was really happy with the way that was going and I really like doing that So I'm actually going to go back and start doing a little bit more of that type of stuff But at the same time we're going to be working on a brand new island design for me as well One that I've wanted to do for a very very long time But really haven't been able to because I just haven't been able to get all of the materials and stuff that they need but now with all of this new amazing Settlers gear, I'm definitely going to be able to do that. So yeah, we're going to be going on and doing a very, very big project um, while also doing the community game stuff. So that's kind of what I want to do. I think I want to get one more Settler level up and then see what we get from that. And then we're going to move on and start clearing islands and getting ourselves prepared to do some really, really big builds here in Sky Saga Alpha 7. So, running through my daily, I actually managed to get enough stuff together to get up to Settler Rank 7. So let's take a look at what we get with Settler Rank 7. We get Splendid Greaves of Solid Ground. Oh, these things are really cool as well. Let's crack this recipe open and have a look at what it says. Here we go. When equipped, a block placed, uh, a block from the stack that is equipped will be placed in the ground below your feet wherever you, whenever you are off the ground. Only functions on edible islands and in build-off competitions. Which means once we build these things, we could walk out over air and start placing blocks down. Now the reason we're over here as well is this place is my next project, I think. I want to completely obliterate this place, take the uh, pickaxe of demolition to the whole thing and wipe out everything that is here. And just start it afresh, almost. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with this place. I've recently re uh, realized and or learned that... All of these have, like, all of these islands have different skyboxes depending on the color. So this one you can see has this kind of smoggy blue color, like bluey green color to the skybox, which is a little bit odd. So what I'm really going to need to try and do over the next few weeks is work out what type of skybox I want for the couple of islands that I plan on building. So one of them is going to be a city, so maybe this might work for a city. I don't know. This kind of got a bit of a hazy effect going on which would have been really good for the Alice in Wonderland build we just finished doing over on Alpha 6. So I don't know, like I said, I want to clear this place out so that's probably going to be the first thing I do. I'll bring on 
the sheep ball account and we'll do a bit of a time lapse in clearing this place out and see how we go and see what we do from there. So unfortunately, my recording software actually crashed a couple of times while I was attempting to record that time lapse. So I had to cut it short, but kind of coming over here and emptying out this rucksack every now and again when it crashed wasn't a bad thing, but it also made me realize that this was a lot of stone that we carved out. And we were only, I was only really doing that for about 20 minutes. I got a lot of stuff done. And as you can see, my pickaxes are actually almost dead here too. So. It's kind of made me realize I don't have a use in mind for all of this sky stone yet. Oh, well, ether stone or whatever it's called nowadays. Well, I always just, yeah, forget all of the names and the new names of things. But yeah, I don't have any real plans for that thing yet. So what I actually want to do is kind of lay off the destruction just for the moment and finish off moving up through the Settlers Guild. I want to kind of push this a little bit further as well. But the other thing that's happened during the little kind of bits and pieces I've been doing off camera, we've now got access to the Arctic Mastery Quest. So I want to go over and run an Arctic with you guys because running my very first forest with you guys was lots of fun and I found a lot of really awesome stuff that I really liked. So I want to try that again with the Forest Master, uh, Arctic Mastery. Wow, I don't even know what I'm saying today. Um, yeah, I want to run some Arctic Mastery with you guys and see what's new over in the Arctic area. Alright, so here we are in world. Now, I am significantly more prepared for this world than I was for my very first forest because, as you can see in my left hand right now, I have a dagger. Now, this is from running into a loot goblin in one of the forest worlds I've kind of run off camera. I think it was even in my daily, and killing him dropped this awesome thing, which means we are a lot more prepared to take this guy on than we would have been any other way because I would have had to get a few bits and pieces to actually go through um, and build a sword. So we really had to come in here with a forest sword rather than a regular, well, rather than an arctic sword, which would have probably meant we would have been very underprepared. Anyway, let's go have a look around here. I can't really see anything other than the main quest over there, which I really don't want to take on right now. I'm going to leave the cave alone for the moment. Let's see if we can find anything else around here. It doesn't seem to be a whole lot of stuff, which is kind of interesting. Oh, look at that. There's something up there on that floating island. I see you. I'm gonna have to dig out a whole bunch of snow to get that, I think. Oh, and we've got another one over here. Okay. Robo Drudge. Goodbye. Oh, that was ridiculously easy. Also, from memory, these guys have a golden chest in under here. Let's hopefully get in here. Yeah, there it is. All right, what have we got this time? Hip swing! Oh, this is going to be awesome. I'm just going to get, take all for all of that. Thank you. Alright, let's get out of here before we try and hip swing. Here we go! <laughs> oh, that's pretty similar to the old dance um, emote. Oh, but it's still, that's still really funny. I'm going to have to end up placing that on one of my hot key buttons, I think. I've got a few now. And they are just all as hilarious as the last. Right, I think we're going to jump up next. So there's one adventure all the way over there. That's the main adventure. But I honestly think there's something up here. So we're going to go up there and have a quick look. Oh yeah, totally cold. It. Check this place out. There is actually something up here. So we've got one enemy, two enemies. Let's take this guy out first. Come on, there you go. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, looks like there's going to be something downstairs. Oh, and I got hit by something. That's a very short range attack if it wasn't an attack on me at all. Alright, let's take a look. Do, do, do. Oh, whoa, that's a hole in the bottom of the world. That's not something we want. Oh, hello. What are you? Oh, treasure amber farmer, huh? Interesting. We're going to have to crack that open in a minute and see what was inside that. Oh, how cool is this place? Oh, we've got another thing as well. Oh, hello. Look, there's another one over there. Is there anything else around that we can see on floating islands? We can't really see too many of the floating islands, 
But we do have that one over there as well. Let's go pillar over to that. This guy was a lot further away than I thought it was. Take a look at that. You can actually tell the distance a lot better looking this way than we could look in the other way. And yeah, this is just... That was a long, long way over. I even had to go and mine up some more snow just to get my way over here. And what do we got? We've got an Architect B. Oh, awesome. This is the thing I love about this, is that in the previous alpha, you couldn't even really get recipes or anything much in these common worlds. But now, they've kind of updated what they were thinking and what they've been doing. And you can actually, yeah, get those by coming up onto these floating islands, which is awesome because originally there was not really much point in coming up to the floating islands. All the way back, I remember in Alpha 3, there was kind of sort of a point because there were chests up, up here on top of these islands, but there were just a large chest and there was no like more advantage to coming up. Basically it was just a large chest and so if the chest drop rate wasn't great then yeah you just didn't go up there and a lot of the time it wasn't all that great so you didn't go up but now going up onto these type of islands is awesome and is definitely something that I would recommend all of you doing. If you are out running worlds definitely go and have a look at the floating islands around the place. You might be surprised by what you get. Alright let's head over to this last landmark over here, and then we'll head to the main landmark and see what we can see. I think from the look of this thing, all the way back here, I think we're going to be in for a Hunter's Lodge, but then again, they may have changed the name, and also anything that spawns in it, I don't know. It could be very different to what I remember. Those look pretty similar, although these doors are open, which kind of tells me that the other person that's in this world has already been in here and cleared all of this stuff out, so... I also don't really know quite yet the uh, respawn conditions for all of the enemies, so I've been holding off on, well, I'm ho gonna hold off on doing a tutorial on respawn limits until I actually know all of that stuff and, you know, how all of that works. Anyway, I'm gonna go down into this cave because I need to get a few things for my Arctic Mastery, and then we're gonna head over and take on the main location. Alright, so let's do this. This looks like it's a village, so let's see what we got. <laughs> They're growing weeds in their little farm over here. Is there anything down in the water? Looks like there is. Yes! Check it out. Alright, I'll take all of that. Now, the only reason I jumped into that cave was so that I could go and get some iron trunks to go for the mastery quest, but also so that I could collect up a few crystals, because this week the community quest is to collect as many crystals as you possibly can, and I am sitting about a hundred behind Boomkin right now, but I actually have almost a hundred in my inventory, so which means I'm going to probably be ahead of Boomkin, and if I'm not, I'm definitely going to go out and get some more, because I want to at least try to get myself in front of Boomkin for this week. It may or may not happen, but, you know, We'll see how all of that goes. Yeah, so I'll probably put something to do with that in the video on Saturday. Because, of course, it is going to take all the way till Thursday to know who is uh, in the lead of that community quest. Of course, now that I've said this on camera, if Boonkin watches this video, he's probably going to try and beat me and ask for help in streams and things like that. So... I probably don't stand much of a chance at all, but still, it's a fun one to try out. Ooh, animal pens. I haven't seen this one before. I'm gonna say, I really like the new gates. Look at this. Look how cool that is. Including, like, the little skull and everything. It just looks awesome. I really need to get my hands on a whole lot more recipes than I currently have. Because there's some really, really cool stuff here in Alpha 7. Also, I'm still in that phase where I'm just taking absolutely everything. I mean, I've still only got those three large chests. Well, I guess four if you count the one that's got all the bulk stone in it now. But yeah, so I'm just going to kind of keep taking everything until I fill up those chests and I'm going to have to sort out my systems. And I'm thinking we're going to probably do an episode on that at some point because this time I've decided I want to do something a little different with my chests. I'm probably going to end up doing color coordinated chests and doing 13 chests for Lots of the major stuff that is going to go on. Ooh, what's that? Is that where I'm going? Or is this where I'm going? I'm very confused. Alright, let's try down here first. Let's see what's down here. Ooh. Wow, this is very silly, isn't it? <laughs> this is really cool. I've got a lot of work into these. Like, these new adventures are 
awesome. Obviously, the the system that they had in Alpha 6 was just a placeholder because they've really, really put a... What? 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 I'm so confused. Am I supposed to have come this way or am I supposed to have got here another way? Like... What? Uh... Oh! Okay. Going around in a big circle. There you go. Alright, so we came up through this one? Yes, we came up through this one. And there's nothing in this one. Alright, oh good. Okay, I'm back where I... I'm, I understand. I know where I am now. That's good. Wow, these things are really labyrinthy these days. But I think it was to do with... Uh, all the way back in like Alpha 3, people were saying that adventures just didn't take long enough. So now they've kind of flipped it back the other way on us and done this type of thing where it's just huge, huge, long, like maze-like structures, which I personally think is really, really awesome because it does add quite a bit to the game. Like you do get quite a lot more exploring now. Although this place seems rather empty of enemies, which is kind of worry like weird and worrying at the same time. I'm going to keep going through and see if we can find anything or anybody. Alright, so we've come to the boss chamber and, oh, yeah, no, there is actually a boss in there. I was about to say that there was nobody down here, but then he spawns. This is the first enemy that I've seen in this entire thing. So, let's just take this guy out. I'm probably going to have to do some jumping attacking and also going to have to run away. Because <laughs> that was a lot of damage. Alright, let's see. Jump attack. Yeah, there we go. Oh, 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 no, 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 don't hit me with that thing. Come on. Come on, buddy, let's do it. Let's go. Hiya! Hiya! Oh, this is working. Oh, no, no, spoke too soon. Come on, man. Alright, you ready? Ready? Sassy lasso. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> hey, it worked! I actually managed to kill him. That was probably one of the more ridiculous things I've done. Alright, let's get rid of some mushrooms. Let's drop the white ones. And pick that guy up. Yeah, there we go. That's probably going to be a raw materials. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Oh, this place looks really cool. I like how they've kind of made it look a little more... Like, I don't know, like I thought frostbitten, just by like the blue torches and stuff. That looks really cool. Alright, let's see what we've got in here. That is a lot of stuff. Let's see how much of that I can actually take. All right, I should probably clear something out. Take that fabric sheet. There we go. Awesome. All right, that is it for this one. Let's go home and do some more stuff. Okay, let's go hand in this stuff and see where we're sitting on the leaderboard. So, handing in 123 items. Perfect. All right, let's say we are on the leaderboard. We are 100, uh, 590. Now, where was Boomkin? Aha! Boomkin, there he is! 530! Perfect! Alright, so there it is, we are now in front of Boomkin. This is probably not going to last, as I mentioned, but for now, that is very, very cool. Also, check this out. Check out the person who is at the top. Kazlos at 2026. That is very, very impressive, and I think that's going to be hard to beat, because that person is probably going to keep powering away and keep adding stuff to their total. Alright, so I think now what I want to do is I want to collect a few more Settler quests and see how far we can push this thing up. I want to see if I can hit level 9 today. Alright, level 8, let's do this. So, 1, 2, when it loads, here we go, 2, and 3. Bam! Level 8, let's go and have a look. Oh, and I still haven't actually built the Greaves of Solid Ground yet, so we need to go home and do that as well, don't we? Alright, let's go down here. Let's take a look. Settler 8, and we get the Tremendous Helmet of True Sight. Alright, let's learn that guy and build both of these things at the same time. And here we are in all of the Settler's gear. Check this stuff out. Check out how good it looks, especially it looks all together. This thing just makes a really, really awesome ensemble, I think. And I love the mask too, I love this thing. I honestly think it looks a little bit like Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy. As in, the most recent movie, not the comic book version, because I know that there are differences between those two. But yeah, check it out. 
definitely a kind of Star Lord space type mask. All right, let's, so let's take a look at what these boots and helmet actually do. So the helmet does the grid as normal. Oh, well, not as normal anymore, I guess. But yeah, it does the grid as you used to be able to do just by hitting G in Alpha 6. Now, I probably won't be using the grid too much because I did have a few people who told me that they didn't really like uh, me using the grid on camera. I do use the grid quite a lot when I'm building, though, just because it does make it really, really easy to see where things are and where they're going, especially now that I'm going to be able to put blocks from a very long way away. Should be able to do that now, actually, because I do have the um, gloves of long reach on. There we go. Oh, and there you go. You can now see what these boots do. So if I walk out over a ledge, these boots put down blocks out of my hands. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, and there you go. I completed the quest chain for them just by doing that little bit. But yeah, this is going to make block placing so much quicker and easier because even with these long range gloves, it does take quite a lot of time and there is mistakes that happen when you're placing blocks by hand. So just being able to run and have blocks placed underneath you is absolutely awesome. Okay, and I think that is about all I have time for for today. So I'm over here, I'm just going to hand in these last few ambers that I have and get a few more recipes, but then I think that will be it for today and today's episode because I am very, very quickly running out of time. I need to edit this video and get it off because it does take me a very, very long time to upload videos because my internet connection isn't the best. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed this special Monday episode. Please let me know if you want me to do more Sky Saga like this and keep up this recording schedule and I will see what I can do about it. Anyway, I will see you all next episode.